And next thing you know, they've locked me up for nine hours. They came in and said, would you like noodles or chips? And I was chips, and it was like chips. And so I did opt for the potato chips over the noodles. I went to London and um, it was to do this like little mini job. It was only for like a day or two and then the rest of the whole trip could just be... Have a pleasure. Yeah, have a pleasure to stay in a fun hotel. Anyway, I got there and my passport wouldn't go through the little thing, you know. It wouldn't, for some reason, it wouldn't go scan right. So next thing you know, the customs is calling me over and this very strange customs guy was sort of looking at me and he goes, are you here for, for business or pleasure? I want to lie to this guy. So I just said both. And next thing you know, they've locked me up for nine hours in this like little room that at like hour seven, they came in and said, would you like noodles or chips? It's like that, they had an accent. They were, would you like chips? And I was chips and it was like chips. And so I did opt for the potato chips over the noodles. Yeah, it didn't go well like after that. And um, that was the end of that. <laughs> there was one time at an airport where there was a strike when we got to the airport and I was stuck there with my, with my family, and it was very hard to get anything done because everything stopped. It was uh, pre-cell phones. It was that long ago. So we couldn't get to a phone to call for someone to come and pick us up because the, there was a long line of people at the telephone, the old put the quarter in the thing telephone. In other words, we were there for about three and a half, four hours. That was as close to a terrible vacation as I've ever had. I feel like when I was a kid, I went on so many like sweaty, just family vacations where always something was medical was going wrong. You know, my mom going over the handlebars of her bike and breaking her shoulder. Me getting, you know, something in my eye to the point where I have to go to the ER. Who knows, you know? Family vacations are always a mess, aren't they? I was on a, a bachelor party. When I was fairly young, a friend of mine got married like young, he was kind of 26 or something, went to Barcelona and um, we lost him in Las Ramblas, uh, like completely lost him. We didn't know where he'd gone or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, we figured he's just wasted and whatever, done something stupid uh, or passed out somewhere. We wake up in the morning, he's still not there. Lunchtime comes around, we're still not there. He, we, he, we st and he's known for being this kind of, you know, guy that bad things happen to. We go, we had to go to the hospitals and we had to go to three prison, like jail cells, to check if he was in there. Oh no! Then at 7.30 p.m. finally, this is years ago, it was the only, it was on like Facebook Messenger, we get a, one message being like, no wallet in internet cafe. Oh no! <laughs> but just before we got that, we were flipping a coin to see who was going to call his parents and say they that he's gone him. That's so the hangover, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, but That's we got wild. Back. And he'd been mugged, obviously. He had been mugged? Yeah. The worst thing that happened to me during a vacation in Cuba, I went there with my boyfriend and I was supposed to be there for a couple of months. But then when I arrived there, I realized that I was in love with another person. And it was a nightmare <laughs> because every night I came out of the bed and I was looking for a phone because Cuba, it happened a few years ago. They didn't have a phone. So I had to walk in the nighttime to find a phone in a hotel to call that guy I was in love with. And I was feeling so bad. Actually, I could never talk to him. <laughs> I kept talking to his mom. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> he was never home. And then it was really, I was struggling because I didn't want to hurt my boyfriend. But then one day I had to tell him, I'm so sorry, I think I don't love you anymore. And that was sad. And then I took a plane and I went to Spain to join the other one. Yeah. And I stayed with him for five years. I, mean. I ate some food in in Camden Town in London <laughs> with a group of people and then we all decided to go to Piccadilly Circus and then in the middle of the trip and that moment we all looked at each other and we had a bridesmaids moment and unfortunately <laughs> there was no such thing as Uber at the time there were only taxis and there was 12 of us and they would only take four in a cab at a time so we literally were it became like like survivor like we had because there was no bathrooms anywhere and so we were like picking four okay no 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 we're going we're going and like push them off and get back to the the, the place that wow. we had rented in in earl's court mm -hmm. oh you were saying about the cruise right yeah i had a pretty awful 
uh, experience on a cruise ship because I'm I'm pretty claustrophobic and you'd think like how can that happen on the open seas it happens because the rooms are tiny and you're trapped on this boat I was with my family and I was very young so I couldn't really like do anything fun on a cruise like gamble drink. or drink <laughs> like what else I had a bad cruise too but I I'm also thinking now about this van trip Ooh. I tried taking with an ex and uh, just didn't work <laughs> the van didn't work <laughs> just nothing worked <laughs> Unfortunately, I really yeah. wanted to be good at van life. I got lost on a cruise ship when I was a little kid. That was pretty traumatic. Wow. Yeah, I had kind of wandered off somehow, and I was wandering around, and I didn't know where I was. I mean, and it, somebody found me, and then they oh, had to put announce my name over the loudspeaker. I've never recovered. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on a cruise ship ever again. <laughs>